Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Tuesday, January 22nd, 2013. It is the first day of the trading week after the Martin Luther King holiday. So let's jump right into the charts here. We'll start off with the usual S&P 500 E-mini futures. You're going to see that the futures are trading slightly lower, down by about two points today to around 1477 per contract. So futures are ticking a little bit lower. Nothing... Uh, dire here, the markets have held up pretty well uh, going into the holiday. They are seeing a little bit of down ticking though at the moment. There is there are some earnings out this morning uh, as the catalyst, but nothing, nothing all that dramatic. Um, bigger earnings will be out today after the closing bell. I believe today we do have um, companies such as uh, Google being report reporting after the closing bell today. Uh, IBM, Texas Instruments. Advanced micro devices and a host of others, but this morning um, not really uh, all that dramatic. A lot of Dow components, but um, small movers. Nothing uh, that I'm seeing that is a real gigantic mover, at least not yet. So futures down about two points, not a big deal at the moment. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index. You'll see that the dollar is trading lower by about 10 cents at the moment, but that has really come off of the lows, and as the dollar ticks up. What does that do to the market? Ticks the market down. So dollar up, market a little bit lower. And that's how you have to view this market right now. Um, we may see some light volume today. Uh, but I think after the Google earnings, volume should pick up at least a little bit. Volume in, in the month of January ultimately has been very, very disappointing as it has been extremely light. It has not even uh, really ticked up at all. It has just been uh, outside of options expiration. It has been extremely, extremely light. So we'll see if volume picks up tomorrow, uh, or tonight, I should say, after uh, Google announces earnings, IBM announces earnings, <coughs> advanced micro devices, and so forth. So you get some bigger companies out there uh, announcing earnings. All right, let's take a look at a few other things out here today. Um, first, we want to go to the gold market. The gold market this morning is trading flat, unchanged. Really, uh, spot gold is sitting at $1,600.90. An ounce that's basically down a dollar from Friday's close. Oil is sitting unchanged, uh, really right here at ninety-five dollars and ninety-five and fifty-one cents. So ninety-five fifty-one for light sweet crude. Let's take a look at the GLD, see if there's any movement out there. Really, uh, GLD is sitting at one sixty-three sixty. So this year closed at one sixty-three oh nine. You're up about fifty cents there on the GLD. Let's take a look at the USO. Uh, the USO is trading right at $34.75. So again, this is right where oil uh, USO closed on uh, Friday. So we can't make too much out of this at the moment. Again, if the dollar starts to fall, expect gold and oil to get more of a bid. If the dollar starts to inflate and trade higher, then it, gold and oil probably will most likely deflate and trade lower. Uh, real quick, um, I just want to take a real quick preview of the European markets. The German DAX is down about nine tenths of one percent, so traders want to keep that on on watch. Um, looks like the French CAC 40 is down about six tenths of one percent, and then you have the FTSE 100, which is not part of the eurozone. They can print their own money. That is down about two tenths of one percent. So again, um, German DAX, most important index in Europe by far. Uh, keep an eye on that one. That is down about nine tenths of one percent. Maybe that finally is starting to pull back, finally starting to see a little bit uh, of a correction from its huge inflationary run that it has had over the past uh, several months. All right, let's take a look at a few other things out here. We're going to talk about some stocks in the news today. Um, I'm going to start off first um, <clears throat> with Johnson & Johnson. Again, the stock closed at around 73.23, way overbought. It's trading at 72.50, no real trade in here at all. Um, but the stock is overbought, so I would not be jumping on Johnson & Johnson at this stage of the game. Um, but theoretically, there's nothing wrong here. Just a little pullback after earnings. Um, like I said, it closed at 73 and a quarter. Today, it's trading at uh, 72.46 in the pre-market. There is no play. A play, a, a level I really like Johnson & Johnson, though, would be around $69.70 if it does get there. So keep an eye on that, 69, uh, 69.70 if it does get down there. I don't know if that will even happen. I'm not expecting it, but that's the only level I would become attracted to Johnson & Johnson. Other than that, I'd leave it alone. Let's take a look at good old DuPont, another Dow component. Uh, DuPont closed at $47 a share today. It is trading at 
$47.40. It was a little bit higher towards the 48 level. Um, this has a ton of resistance around $48.30. And 30 cents. So keep an eye there. You also have the 200 day moving average a little bit higher, around $48.48. And, .48. and then a lot more resistance at $49.68. Uh, resistance all the way up for DuPont. So I would not be jumping on DuPont. Good resistance levels, could see some pullbacks. Um, $48.30, not a bad area to $48.48. That, that's a nice little pullback area, intraday scalp level, if it does get up there. Let's take a look at NVO. Um, this is Norvo Nordis. Uh, this stock is making a new all-time high today. It's trading at around $178 a share, closed at $174.72. Um, fairly strong. I mean, it's holding up well, but it is so overbought here. Um, this thing probably wants to get to around the 180 level, um, maybe a Pierce of 180. I would not be a buyer here. Do not chase this thing. It is way overcooked. It is also a light volume name, so it's very, very difficult to sell short, okay, because these light volume names can sometimes get overdone to the upside as well as to the downside, but I would not be chasing this thing up here. I do not have a great short level since this stock is making a new all-time high, but um, don't chase this one up here. A lot of resistance around 180, um, somewhere in that area. Uh, maybe it's 181, 182. It's just very hard when you have a thin volume stock to calculate the move. All right, let's take a look at this uh, BOX ticker symbol, C cube container leasing. This is another one with a big, big move today, trading around $23. This is also another light volume stock and also an all-time high. This actually came public late in 2010, so there's not all that much data to go off of. But I, what I can say is it is a weak gap up, means that it's probably going to fade up here. Um, it is a very thin stock. Probably average volume is somewhere around, you know, 50, 60,000 shares a day. So don't chase this thing. Um, it's very hard. It's a very, very difficult short. At least for me, it is. And I've been, you know, trading gaps for well over 10 years. Um, so take my word on it. It's a very, very tough short, but you don't want to buy it. So again, sometimes the best move is no move. Aggressive traders. Um, you know, may look to short it up here somewhere around 23 or so, but it is a very difficult short trade because of the light volume nature in the equity. So I just would not be a buyer. I would leave it alone. I wouldn't do anything with it, okay? Um, there are a few other stocks out here making some moves this morning, but they're smaller moves. Research in Motion happens to be another one. RIM is catching a little bit of a bid, trading around 1750 now it has pulled back to around 1680. Rim is very, very overbought, so be careful with this one as well. I know there's some news out there, but this is a weak gap up, so you've got to be careful. I know there's a lot of short positions in research and motion right now, um, so that that's probably the reason for the squeeze. But uh, again, be very, very careful um, with research and motion up here at these levels. This thing is just so overdone. You don't want to jump on board at this point. I know there's news out on it. I know somebody's saying that they're going to interact with other companies. Believe me, save the news, you know, throw the news under the bed. Uh, just watch the chart. The chart will tell you everything you need to know. Okay? That pretty much wraps it up with everything that I'm seeing out here. Um, again, we'll just take it slow. It is the first day back in the trading week. Um, there are no other movers that I'm seeing that look all that dramatic. So traders want to be a little bit on the cautious side. Um, and we'll just see how this all shakes out and plays out going forward. But right now, um, markets look to be down about $1.50 in, in the overall S&P 500 E-mini futures before the opening bell. So, uh, again, the dollar will tell us more, and we'll see what kind of patterns shape out. It looks to be a slow open and, um, you know, typical start to the week. Volume is a little bit on the lighter side. With that said, everybody, I want to wish you all a great trading day, and I will see you on the charts tomorrow. Take care now.